All right, welcome back to another Flipped Classroom video. Today we're going to talk about classifying functions more specifically. Um, just a review from the other day. Um, if we wanted to, we were trying to determine whether a, a relation was a function or not. And if we wanted to determine whether it was a function or not, we simply applied the vertical line test to our graphs. Or if it wasn't a graph, we just had to ask ourselves, did every input correspond to only one output? And, uh, you know, as long as we determined that, we were good to go. Now, today we're going to try to dive a little deeper and classify these functions more specifically. Number one today, we're going to try to tackle, we're going to determine whether these functions, once we determine whether it's a function or not, we're going to try to determine whether it's a one-to-one -one function or not. And the other type that we're going to examine is what's called an onto function. So that's the two new terms we're going to tackle. So we're kind of going to cut this um, lesson into two mini lessons. One mini lesson on one-to-one -one and then a separate lesson on onto. And then at the end of today's video, we're trying to tie them together and, and uh, challenge you a little bit there. So here's our first big definition for today, for one to one, and I think it's a definition that makes a lot of sense once you chew on it for a little while. But uh, so, so we're going to say a one-to-one -one function. Not only does each input correspond to only one output. Okay, so right now nothing new. That's how we define a function. But each output now corresponds to only one input. So now instead of being a one-way street, it's a two-way street. We're saying not only does each x map to own and only one y value, but also each y value maps to one and only one x value. So we really can't have any double dipping, so to speak, on either side of the table or the mapping. So let's take a look here. I'm going to scroll down just a whisker. Let's see if we can analyze uh, these tables at all. Now it says, of the four tables below, only one of them represents a relation that's actually one-to-one. -one. And uh, we're going to try to figure out who that is, and then we'll analyze the three that aren't and try to explain why they're not. We want to be real specific here. Okay, so what you'll notice here on the first one is, I would say, look at this bear right here, the first two ordered pairs. Right here, I would say this is not even any, you know, not even a function to begin with. And the reason it's not a function is because the four maps to not only the two, but also to negative two. And each these inputs are not allowed to have different outputs. So not a function to begin with. Okay. On the second one, number two, um, I want you to compare this ordered pair to this ordered pair. Okay. So I would say, you know what? Yes, this is a function. Okay, because each of these inputs corresponded to one and only one output. However, we used uh, two diff we had some double dipping, so to speak, on these outputs. Um, so it's not, even though it's a function, this one's not what we call one to one because of the ones right here that got used twice. All right, let's see this third table. All right, you notice, okay, every x value is unique. And then you'll notice every y value is also unique, so that fits our definition perfectly. Not only did the inputs correspond to one and only one output, but vice versa, the outputs corresponded to one and only one input. So I would say not only is this bear a function, but it is a one, two, one function. That's our big winner for the day. And then last but not least here, let's examine this last table. All the x values are unique. That's good, so it is a function. However, when you analyze the y's, we do have some repeated y values. We repeated the 10, and so that makes it not one-to-one. -one. We want to make sure that all of the y values are unique. All right, let's see here. Now we've got some pictures instead of these table values. Now we've got some graphs to consider. And uh, da, 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 part A here, they want to say, hey, circle the two graphs that are functions and explain how you know that they're functions. All right, so this is basically review from last week. And I would say this bear right here is a function because it passes the vertical line test. And I would also say this one's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Notice a vertical line intersects the graph more than once. Same thing here. Vertical line intersects the graph more than once. So these two bears here, we said failed the vertical line test. So they're not functions. Now part B. Of the two graphs you circled, which one's one-to-one? -one? Okay, which one's one-to-one? -one? Well, what you'll notice here, let me start with graph number one. Do you see how I'm just going to pick this random point here and this random point here? They both have unique x values, but they share the same y value. So I would say that this graph here is not one-to-one -one 
because we just identified a certain y value that was repeated or used more than once. But you come over here, and not only is every single x value on this line unique, but also every single y value is unique. We didn't see any repetition in either the x's or the y's. So this is our big winner, winner, chicken dinner. He is not only a function, but he's also a special one-to-one -one function. So now I'm going to teach you a trick that we could have used on the last slide. Um, but And this trick is going to make your life really, really easy when it comes to these one-to-one uh, -one functions. And it's basically it's called the horizontal line test, not to be confused with the vertical line test. So basically, to summarize here, and, and, and this is a great definition to get down. Now, as you throw this in your notebook, feel free to par paraphrase and, and uh, abbreviate as much as you want. For instance, instead of writing out horizontal line test, you could just say, you know, HLT. And I assume when you look back at your notes in a few months, you'll, you'll remember what that means because we'll use it quite a bit. Um, basically, it says this test works because... The horizontal lines represent all constant y values, and hence if a horizontal line intersects a graph more than once, then the output or the y values have been repeated. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the vertical line test first to make sure they're functions. Don't forget about that. First of all, make sure they're functions. This bear is not a function, so we're going to throw him out. This bear is a function, so we'll keep him. This one's a function, and this one's a function. No matter where we put the vertical lines, we never had multiple intersections. All right, now... We're going to go through. Now, remember, we already threw number one out of the way. So even though one passed the horizontal, he was already eliminated from contention. Now, we go to number two, and you'll notice a horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. So this sucker, although it was a function, it's going to fail the horizontal line test, and therefore, it is not one-to-one. -one. Okay? And then we come over here to this third graph. This one does pass the horizontal line test. Never has more than one intersection. So we'd say not only is he a function, but he is a one, two, one function. Very well behaved. Very polite function, we like to say. And then we get here to number four. And again, just like the graph we saw on the last slide, we have multiple intersection points. So we said this one's going to fail the horizontal line test, although it did pass the vertical. And so it is a function. However, it's not a one-to-one -one function. All right, now we're going to move on to the second half of our lesson today. We're going to describe something that's called an onto function. And our definition here simply says that every possible output, and when I say output, I'm just referring to the y values again, is used. All right. In other words, there will be no unused y values. No, none of the y values will be sitting on the sidelines, so to speak. They're all going to be actively involved in the game. Now, graphically, how do I interpret that graphically? It's this simple. We're going to make sure that our graphs extend infinitely high as well as infinitely low. And if those graphs go infinitely high and infinitely low, then they'll cover every single y value. And in other words, the every single y value will be used. All right, so here's a couple of mappings here. And we're going to break this. We're going to analyze the one on the left here first. And we're going to ask ourselves, is this onto or not? Okay, so we just got to ask ourselves, does every output get used, okay? Now, uh, remember the yellow circle here is my output. That's where the arrows terminate. So the 4 guy used, the 2 guy used, the 5 guy used, and since every member in set B got used, we would say, yes, this sucker is on to. All right. Now, just, uh, just as a review, not to be confused with everything else, let's review a couple of things here. Let's ask ourselves, is this uh, mapping a function? First and foremost, is it a function? And I analyze the inputs, and what you noticed is that all the inputs are unique, and none of them got used more than once. So I would say, yes, it is a function. Then we ask ourselves, is it one-to-one? -one? And what we'll notice here is there was repetition in this set. The two got used more than once, so we would say, no, it's not one-to-one. -one. And then just to reemphasize the fact, was it on two? We said, yes, it is on two, because every member in the output set got used. So just to review and kind of put all three things together. Let's jump over here to this next one. As we analyze this set right here, and again, we're asking ourselves, is, is this bear on to or not? The four got used, the two got used, and the five got used, but guess what? The eight and the one did not get used. And since those guys are sitting on the sidelines unused, we're going to say that this is not an on to function. In other words, no. Just to review from the other day, is it a function first and foremost? We analyzed this input set, the X's, so to speak, and everyone um, w was unique. None of them got repeated, so we would say, yes, it's a function. And is it one-to-one? -one? 
In other words, was there any repetition in the, in the output set? Four got used once, the two got used once, the five got used once, and as long as none of them got used more than once, we said yes, it is an on to, or yes, it is one to one. However, we already answered the question, it is not onto. Graphically, I think it's going to be easier to determine whether it's onto or not when we do these graphically. We're just going to, like our definition said earlier, we're going to ask ourselves, does the graph go infinitely high and does it, go, does it extend infinitely low? And what you notice, this end, the graph right here, does imply that the line is extending infinitely high. And this edge does imply that it's extending infinitely low. So I would say, yes, this function is onto. As a review from earlier, I would say it is a function because it passed the vertical line test. And I would say, yes, it is one-to-one -one because it passes the horizontal line test as well. Okay, let's move on to our next graph here. Question being, is this onto? Well, you'll notice it does extend infinitely high, so that's a good thing. However, it never goes lower than y equals negative 2. And we would say, therefore, it does not extend infinitely low. And I would say, no, this graph or this function is not onto. Was it a function? Yes, it was a function. It passed the vertical. Was it one-to-one? -one? Let's entertain that idea. Was it one-to-one? -one? Ah, it failed the horizontal line test, so I would say no. So even though this parabola was a function, it's not one-to-one -one and it's not onto. Okay, just a little bit more practice here. Um, let's start here with this function here on the left, and we're going to run through all three questions. Is it a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes. Okay. Is it one-to-one? -one? Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes. Is this onto? In other words, does the graph stand infinitely high? Yes. Does it extend infinitely low? Yes. So we've got a yes to all three. That's a, the x cubed is a really fun function as you go further in math. All right, next graph here on the right. Is it a function to begin with? And I would say, does it pass the uh, vertical line test? Yes. Okay, is it one, whoops, one, two, one? Uh, does it pass the horizontal line test? No. And is it an onto function? In other words, does it extend infinitely high and infinitely low? Well, it does extend infinitely high on both edges, but it does never extend infinitely low. It never goes below y equals zero, so we got no there. All right, these last couple slides, I'm going to try to challenge you with some open-ended questions. And I want to emphasize for these last three questions, there are multiple answers. I'm going to show you, I'm going to suggest one possible answer, but you could be creative and probably justify some different answers. Here, I want to challenge you with the idea that we're going to draw a function that, yes, is one-to-one, -one, but it's not onto. So when I said one-to-one, -one, we've got to make sure we draw something that passes the horizontal line test. And then when I said not onto, we need to draw something that doesn't extend infinitely high or infinitely low or maybe even both. The first thing that came to my mind, and again I want to emphasize there's multiple answers, the first thing I visualized was perhaps an exponential function. An exponential function is a function that grows gradually at first and then takes off at a very rapid fashion. We would say that this function increases at an increasing rate. What this graph possesses, and maybe you remember this from algebra 1, is it has a horizontal asymptote down here. In other words, it's kind of like a boundary, an invisible boundary. And the graph on this edge gets closer and closer and approaches the x-axis but never touches it. So we would say it's, it does pass the horizontal line test, so it's one-to-one. -one, but because it doesn't extend infinitely low, it's not onto. All right, we're going to flip the script on this one. We're going to draw something that is onto. In other words, it's going to go infinitely high and it's going to go infinitely low. However, we're going to draw something that's not one-to-one. -one. In other words, it fails the horizontal line test. And I tell you what, I encourage you before I splash my answer on the screen here, you know, hit the pause button, challenge yourself to be creative, and see if you can draw a picture that satisfies these two things. Okay, here's what I came up with. And again, we'll emphasize that there are a variety of answers. All right, I drew a curve that had multiple turning points in it like such, okay? What you'll notice is this function does fail the horizontal line test right through here, okay? But the good news is it extends infinitely high and it extends infinitely low, so it is onto. Okay, our very last one, we're now we're going to draw something that's super special. We're going to draw a function that is both one-to-one -one and onto. In other words, it's going to pass the horizontal line test and it's going to extend infinitely high in one direction and infinitely low in the other direction. And again, feel free to hit the pause button and try to draw this one yourself. 
And a couple of things that I suggest we could come, basically any linear function that you could think of, whether it's an increasing linear function or maybe a decreasing linear function, anything like this would satisfy both criteria. Or uh, maybe you remember that x cubed graph that we drew earlier. He increased, passed through the origin with a little curl, and then continued to increase. All three of these graphs that I drew pass the horizontal line test and extend infinitely high and low in both directions. So, so those are some examples you could choose from. So hopefully you felt good tonight, and we'll see you in class tomorrow.